Remember a while ago when I made this video? And guys, we have an electric trike now. I don't have headlights and stuff, but just ignore me. Well, since then, I've come a long way, but so has automation. With new wheel offset options, we can now do it without any code editing. This time, I'm not going to do the jankiness that I did, and I've actually made this into a mod body. And after making a few mistakes, I was finally able to get this thing through here. And finally, in automation, I can now make my very own trike completely without having to do any code intervention, if I can find it. Where, where are you? Ah, there we are. For some reason, the image is incorrect. Ah, whatever, we'll fix that later. But here you go. Woo, yeah, baby, that's what I like to see. So the last time I did this, there was lots of compromise, and this time there is a lot less compromise. Starting with making this out of fiberglass, it's going to be a space frame because a tubular chassis for such a low production sort of vehicle is how I want it to be. One note to take special point of is the fact that front engine is gonna do you a lot better because then you get the choice of semi-trailing arm, which is the best suspension for this setup. Just basically, as long as you don't choose solid rear axle, you're going to be absolutely fine. For this little thing, we're gonna have basically a, a little eco box engine. And yes, there is major size limitations, but that's the crux of this body. Make it out of some aluminium. And you know what, even one liter may be a little bit too much. Let's go down to 800 cc's and turbocharge this instead. We also want a low cam profile, some variable valve lift, probably don't need very strong springs drop the compression ratio down a bunch, and then add that turbocharger. We'll come around to the rest of this in a little bit later. Some injection, some direct injection. We're just going with like, we'll probably grab this from like a Volkswagen or a BMW sort of thing. And we're gonna drop the intercooler off. So then this is a no intercooler situation. You can see there, there's no longer an intercooler. And then we're gonna run a high pressure turbo system. Except I think we've hit a pressure limit because we're not actually creating any more stuff here. What's going on? I think we're just outside of the efficiency so much. So instead, let's shrink this down. You know what, let's just hit eco. And just a buttload of boost. And with a little bit of tweaking, I think this is a fairly good number, about 58.8 kilowatts, but a buttload of torque, which is really going to help us. And I'm not a big fan of the valve cover, so let's go something, what is 90s Opal V3? What is that? That is weird. Uh, this must be, these must be mods. So we got Ford Modular. Oh, that was looking cool, except for the fact that seems to be some material issues here and painting it is not helping. Is it valve cover trim maybe? No, still the wrong stuff. Why can't I paint this? What is, I don't, I don't understand. Is it valve cover bolts? Maybe let's figure this out, wrinkle paint. There we go, that's what we needed to see. But this is not the color we want. We just wanna have near black. Wait, what? Hold on, uh, there we go, that's the right one. Why is there two different, ah, oh, whatever. Weird things are happening here. Let's give it a little bit of a listen now. Very quiet engine, very fitting for this sort of vehicle. And we do have a few paint options that I've given. So the primary color is going to be white, but it's gonna be like plastic white. And I, I just liked that look. Then the secondary color is kind of like this chassis sort of thing. That's going to be a black plastic. This trim edge here is going to be the same as the normal body. And this rear trailing arm back here is also gonna be painted in like a black plastic sort of color. And let's just quickly go through and do everything we need to do. It's gonna be an automatic little four speed thing. And since it's going to be a one wheel anyway, let's just go ahead and select a manual locker, a radial, some sort of medium compound, some regular old brakes, nothing too special. This thing does have a fully clad under tray, even though it's not exactly uh, an under tray, it's just more kind of the whole body is wrapped in plastic. And this is gonna be a Bluetooth one. It's gonna be just a radio, nothing special. So we're gonna go with a basic cassette sort of thing. Probably doesn't need power steering, so we're gonna go without that, but it will have ABS, it needs that safety. And we're gonna select sport on this, and we're going to reduce the rear camber as much as possible, and make the sway bars as stiff as possible, because we don't want these rear wheels rotating at all. Wait, I just 
realized I probably didn't explain that well. I don't want them rotating this way at all. Anyway, apparently we have strong oversteer and the car has severe issues with wheel spin. Let's give ourselves a nice cruising speed and have a look at our oversteering issue. I think maybe we could reduce our front camber and get rid of that altogether as well too. No, we still have massive amounts of oversteer and we're gonna make this rear tire basically a motorcycle tire so we're gonna make it thick that has also helped fix our oversteer issue and here's where the interesting part happens so first we're gonna do so we're gonna turn off the chassis then we're going to bring that wheel offset in mahusively all the way down please and as you see here we're going to go until this completely overlaps. And yes, you can overlap the tires. It doesn't crash the game or any break it or anything like that. Now you may notice our tires are a little bit weird. Well, that's fine. We can just go ahead and select a different sort of wheel that hopefully does a better job of it. You just gotta find the right one, I suppose. And there we go. That's the right sort of one. But we got this issue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change wheel concave. And then once we got that lined up, we're gonna bring wheel center offset in considerably. Now don't worry about the suspension hanging out because we are about to paint that transparent. So now we don't have to look at the suspension at all. And now we've also got the transmission back here as well, which is a bit of a problem. Still got the engine there and it is mid engine. So mm, that engine's not greatly placed. Should have I gone front engine? It is front, wait. That's where the engine goes when it's front trans longitudinal. What about transverse? Transverse goes in the right place. But longitudinal puts it all the way... Apparently, I have to fix the mod. Give me a second. I think what's happened is I've placed the fire... Like, I forgot to place the fireball. So, let's go ahead and fix that. The front firewall. Let's move that into place. Right about there. Then the rear firewall. We should move that back considerably. Nope, that's too far. Oh, nope. Okay, sorry. Right about there, I think. Oh, dear. And then we're going to save that. We're going to retake that thumbnail. And actually, I think we might make our engines just a little bit bigger. I know this is kind of jank, but if somebody wants to do it, that's entirely fine. So we're going to up this to about 35s. So... You probably won't be able to fit in the biggest engines possible, but you know, pretty big. Save that and share the mod. So in one foul swoop, we fixed this uh, overlapping sort of issue and our engine seems to be in the right sort of place, but still it's not greatly placed. Our legs are gonna have to move around there somehow, but I'm still actually quite happy with this. Also looks like moving the engine into the right place has helped our oversteer issue we were having. Now, every single time you change a rear tire size of this, we are gonna have to go in here. If you want it to be symmetrical, to go in here and make it fit properly. It's right there. Perfect. And let's get a little bit of front offset on here. Uh, make them look good. Yes. Aren't I a genius? Now, you can do this with any body. I just wanted to have a body for this. And I had previously done this with solid axles and it didn't work. And I chucked it away thought, thinking that there was no way to make this work normally without a huge amount of effort. And it was some other people on my Discord that were showing their stuff that actually uh, made me realize I was just doing it wrong. You can't use solid axles. Any independent rear suspension is what works. But we are gonna do a little bit of editing because I wanna make this rear swing arm suspension work right. We're gonna move that engine a little bit further forwards just so then it kinda doesn't interrupt the feet positioning too much. And we're gonna get to styling this now. What sort of grill fits this body? Hmm, could go something like this. Then go for the round bug eye headlight sort of thing that I had previously. Mm, uh, that's not working. Oh yeah, let's go with this. So we're gonna stick that there. Then we're gonna put that on top and we're gonna 3D place this a little bit deeper and then place it again. You can see the lights are just a little bit deeper now and that's exactly what I wanted to see. Except maybe that's not the right sort of light. I want something that's more modern, more up to spec. Yeah, that brim looks a lot smaller now. And you know what, actually I do like the little bit of black 
spectrum to it. Kind of suits the rest of the body sort of look. So yeah, I think we're gonna leave that. Do we put a bumper on this thing? Just to add a little bit of extra style and flair? Does kind of look cool. So yeah, I think I am actually gonna stick with this. Now, let's start making the interior because it's not gonna be easy. I've had this body for a really long time and I just, I don't know if it's really the greatest body. I mean, look at the amount of air that's coming, gonna be like whipping inside on your face. Maybe not the most comfortable vehicle. What options do we, I know there's a mod thing. Here we go, I want one of these. And I'm thinking maybe this one, bring you up and yeah, I think that could work by fitting in there. It also conveniently kind of covers the engine a little bit. That'll do for now. Let's put some seats in. I'm thinking something like really super basic. So we'll have to, yeah, um, yeah, you know what? It is basic enough. I, I want to keep the price down really super low. Though these seats are pretty big. Big bigger than what I was kind of expecting. I suppose I could go a bench seat. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? All right, let's do that. We're gonna, we're gonna make this into a bench seat. It's not what I had in mind for this vehicle, but I think it works. That way, if you don't have a passenger, you can just stretch out a little bit more. We're gonna make this like a brown leather though. I do like a good brown leather. The problem is, is making it brown is always a little bit tricky here. But with a little bit of tweaking, it looks like it's done a good job. I, I'm, I'm happy with this. Now we just need to stick on our uh, headrest. So we're gonna go like that and plop them in. Go with some door cards. I have made the, uh, like sill line here, rather straight, which will be very convenient for fitting in door cards. Perfect, there we go. All right, we're there. pretty much there now. Let's put a little bit of a window on the back here. Luckily we got little sun visor sorts of things which do a good job. What the hell is happening with the UV cutout? What the hell? Ah, whatever, she'll be right, oh dear. Hmm, luckily we can cover that up with some patchwork, perfect. Looks a little bit jank, but she'll be right, mate. Now we can see out the back and we can put on something like a rear view vision mirror. We should probably also put some side mirrors on. I wanna go with something a little bit bicycle-esque though. Like this, maybe, I think that should do the job. Make that out of some sort of like a brushed steel, aluminium sort of looking thing. Noise. Oh, I've just noticed our exhaust is kind of poking through the rear window. Ah, hello. Nice to meet you. Let's go ahead and stick that exhaust down here somewhere. I'm thinking, you know what, I think I could go with this. Rotate it sideways, make it small, stretch it out a lot. Then we could just kind of plop it down here and make it look like it's some sort of really cool little thing. Make it a part of the style, as opposed to just something you kind of tack on as an afterthought for a normal car. That I like. I like it a lot. All right, what else? Oh, dash filler. Yeah, big gaping hole. Grab ourselves a dash filler and place it down. Yeah, it'll do, close enough. Let's maybe put a steering wheel in. Now, because this isn't exactly a car, it doesn't really need airbags technically because this is what is called in a lot of places around the world or something similar to what is known as an auto cycle, where it fits the definition of a motorbike but is actually more more like a car. It's an in-between sort of thing, usually to help with taxes, all that sort of stuff, and to make it also easier to make, it's cheaper, all that sort of stuff to make, because you don't have to reach a whole bunch of extra safety standards, basically the safety standards of a motorbike. What I'm trying to say is we don't need something with airbags, and I want to go something a little bit retro and cool. We do have some interesting ones here, like maybe something with a little bit of metal on it to like have as a beeping horn, maybe. This one looks good because it's not round. I just wish I had a normal steering wheel that wasn't round that. Like the whole wheel, just like a little bit off square would, would kind of look really cool. You know what, we're gonna go with this. And I think we're gonna make this smaller because it's not a very big vehicle. It's a very small vehicle. And that was a steering wheel probably meant for a much larger sort of vehicle back in the 70s sort of era. And I think that looks fairly good. Got lots of leg room, all that kind of goodness. And yeah, I think we're mostly done here. I am quite happy with my brand spanking new car. Oh, the alignment here is way off, oh dear. You also can almost 
was Naughty the Engine. So I kind of think we're good with that for now. I'm lazy. I don't want to do everything. You know what I realized? Probably need a fuel tank. And the fuel tank would probably sit like right down here. So we'll probably put the fuel filler, which I kind of want to also make interesting. Something like this, maybe? Right about here. But do we keep it made of chrome? Probably not. Yeah, much better. How about now? Now am I done? Oh, I think I'm getting pretty close to being done. Let's go ahead and name this. What brand do I want to associate this with? Because I make my own brands, all that sort of stuff. I'm thinking since it's a concepty sort of vehicle, we might put it under the Ace banner since they do a lot of weird things and they work for a lot of commission sort of style work. And we're gonna call this like, I don't know, beastly, I, whatever. I'm not good at nomenclature, bro. I wonder what Test Track says it'll do before we export it. Two minutes, 47. You know, not the slowest, also not the fastest, but this vehicle is very light. So I kind of thought it would have gone a little bit faster than that. Our brakes are way overpowered, so let's go comfort brakes, please. That's maybe getting a little bit more <laughs> realistic. My goodness, that should do us. Seems we've got a little bit of problem with understeer at high speeds. So what if we down this to be symmetrical front and rear tires? Now we're getting into oversteer. Bugger. Let's maybe stick a little bit of a lip on there. Even though it does have a lip on here, it just doesn't really register the lip. Apparently we can't fit the lip on because the vehicle is too small. Now, hopefully with this weird looking lip on here, we will now have a little bit less oversteer and high speed. No, 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 we still need a lot more apparently. This does just wanna, just does wanna work. Reduce front arrow? Nah, nothing wants to work. All right, fine. Let's just go with some understeer then. Ugh, look at that amount of understeer. God damn. I suppose it'll just have to do what? Okay, what have I done? This will happen sometimes. What I'm gonna guess is we didn't change our tires after we changed the width of the rear tire. So bring that back in. That seems to be about right. And what do we got? Still an issue. <sighs> Let's just have a little bit of offset this time. So they're almost overlapping, and there you go. Now it's working right. And look at that. Instantly spawns in. No issues whatsoever, apart from maybe a little bit of a mesh issue on the wheels, but we can deal with that in Blender if we so chose to. But look at that. It's all working. Oh, uh, the brakes are acting weird, however, but that's all good. And you'll see that because we set the um, uh, sway bar stiffness quite good, that these are not really changing much on orientation. Now, you could, if you wanted to, remove one of the wheels. And we do have a tutorial on that, but there's no real need to. And if you're like, oh, but you got double the traction, well, not quite. See, you get traction not just by like uh, moving a th something over a surface. What you do is you push really hard to get more uh, to get more traction. But because a vehicle's weight is set as it is, if you double the amount of contact patch, then you're halving the amount of pressure down on it. So having twice the amount of wheels doesn't actually add any more or less traction for the most part. So this is just as good as having a real trike. But I can already tell you're having a go at me, so I'll show you how to remove the spare tire if you so choose. First, find your mod, unpack it, open it up. What we'll do is come down and look for wheels rear, and we're just gonna remove all of the stuff we don't need for the left side and get rid of these little ones right here. Control S, bring it over to here and Control R, and now, you can see that there is no other wheel here. Perfect. And there you go. That's how you make it into a real one. How does it drive? Does pretty well. I can hear the engine quite loudly. Do I have the audio turned up? I, Cause I said quite loudly. What I meant is I heard a whining quite loudly. Yeah, no, there's a whine that's much louder than the engine. Listen to this. That is weird. It sounds like an electric motor of some sorts. That's weird. I also noticed just a bit of a spark. Yep, we're getting sparks. Let's have a look at our collision rash quickly. Ah, yes. If you know how to move nerds around, you know what's coming next. If you don't, go watch this video. We're gonna save those little changes we made and control R. We now have a vehicle which is a lot more possible of rolling. We do also notice, I've noticed we've got a lot of springiness. Hmm. Also, our brake caliper looks very strange. 
Oh, yeah, we're, we're lifting up just a smidge. Oh, dear. Seems that this is maybe not the best handling vehicle. Goodness gracious. Oh, look at that body roll. I probably should have made the front sway bar much heftier. Because this thing wants to roll just, yeah, a little too much. Oh, oh it is fun, though. Ah, no. Oh, my God. This is tricky to control but you can see now with one less wheel on the back this thing is not actually any easier or harder to control it is pretty much exactly the same and that's because that whole dealio with less wheels it doesn't mean less traction so yeah this this is done pretty good except the swing arm there isn't really situated the way i want it to be <laughs> Okay, our rear suspension is really super solid. Look at that. It's barely moving, but she is very bouncy. <laughs> but this is so much fun. I'm just gonna turn this rear brake off though. And to do that, we're just gonna like not turn it off. We're just gonna hide the mesh. We don't need that. <laughs> that is funny. That is so funny that it does that. I need to at some point though, fix this rear bounciness. And uh, you know what? Let's go make the spring softer. Suspension, rear J-beam, and find the rear coilovers and change the beam spring to be something considerably lighter. So we've almost halved it, and yeah, it's still very bouncy. Make that smaller, and it's a little bit softer now, but it still does bounce a lot. So let's turn the beam dampening down a bit, and that hasn't changed a thing. Oh, you know what? No, no, that is less bouncy. So let's send it back home and immediately, yes. Okay, we've already got better traction. Oh, the collision mesh is doing weird. What is... There's some weird stuff happening to this car. What the hell? <laughs> no, I haven't fixed it. Anyway, you'll have to figure out how to do things yourself. Oh my God, please. Oh, God. Well, at least it doesn't roll. And these, like, side skirts that I've made are a good way to, like, stop it from, like, rolling completely. Oh! I wonder if I can actually roll this. Let's give it a try. Let's get up some real speed here. If it'll stop doing some squeaky wheel jump thingies. I don't know. Anyway, and then get it swinging back and forth. No, it just doesn't have the traction. Good. Oh, I was hoping that the sausage curbs there would have helped, but no. This thing just won't roll. Perfect. Let's do some time trialing. Let's start off with some fill hell. Hopefully this will do what we really want it to do. We're not generating as much. Oh, there we go. 20 PSI of boost. I was about to say, this thing isn't generating as much boost as I thought it was meant to. And yeah, there we go. Oh, 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 understeer. You don't want so much understeer, but we don't really have a whole lot of choice to even. That's fine, whatever. Slow it down. ABS is going like, what are you doing? Why is this thing so difficult to break? It's because it's bouncing so much for some reason. I don't fully understand why it's bouncing so much. Oh, this thing wants to roll way too much. I really should make the front sway bars super duper stiff to stop <laughs> roll. I think also having a wider vehicle would help because this thing is, oh, not very wide. Oh, that's fine. We still got a vehicle. God, please, please stop bouncing so much. There has to be something more to it than just the spring rate because I halved the spring rate and it's still bouncing way more than what it should be bouncing. Oh, goodness gracious. Every corner is such a hassle. Why must you be like this? Uh, okay, I'm trying not to like uh, cause the rollover situation, which is what you should really want to be doing in real life. And I don't, I don't like to role play even if it is like silly me making a stupid car. Oh. You know what you could do? You probably put little skid pads down on the corners to stop these things um, from rubbing off bodywork and instead would uh, rub on that instead. Oh, just touched. Hopefully we haven't damaged our steering. Oh, Yeah, no, we have damaged our steering. As you can see, that is got positive gear, but no! <laughs> what was that rocket launch? Yeah. I don't think our vehicle has dealt with this very well. And by this, I mean my skill. Okay, this time we've brought it up with considerably less damage. Ignore that side skirt. That seems to be a spawning issue, probably due to the collision mesh being 
pretty jacked up. Oh, can't go too fast around there. And then I've got to slow it down for the first of the downhill uh, hairpins. Not really the tightest of hairpins, but I would consider that a hairpin. This, on the other hand, is straight up a hairpin. Not the worst, because it does kind of bulb us out a little bit. But they are still a lot sharper than what you would like to do in a car like this. As you can see, we uh, were popping up one wheel and scraping on the edges. Oh, there we go. Now, a final stretch. Do we have to slow down for the last curve? Hopefully not. You know what? Yes, no, no, we do. This car does not have the traction. I don't have the bollocks to be able to do that. And there we go. A two minute 18. <laughs> what about? This thing is just silly and I love it. 218, no where does that sit us? Oh, it sits really far low. Actually, you know what? If we have a look here, it actually puts us off of the chart and we're really in last place. Farmer. I was kind of hoping that it wouldn't be the worst car I've ever made. That doesn't work right. Oh God. Oh no, no. But, oh, okay. No, we've saved. No, we've saved. Go, go, be, sa we. Okay, maybe it's not as bad as the potato vehicle. Let's see how it does on the leap of death like the potato car. It should do considerably better than that. What is happening? Why did it fly so much? Oh goodness, I get the feeling this one's gonna fly quite well once we get to the end. 220. Oh, we don't have a clutch. So we're just gonna, there we go. And, oh, you know what? No, it's not that great. Oh, almost 300. But look at that, the car is in drivable condition. Apparently, no mechanical damage whatsoever. Uh, nope. Nope. Oh, oh. Oh. And look at that. We can drive off as if nothing happened whatsoever. Okay. Well. <laughs> God damn. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video and the informative nature of it. I made a lot of mistakes which are gonna be edited out, so this will probably be an annoying video to edit, but at least you'll get a, a fairly good video to watch. If you appreciate the amount of effort I put into my editing and whatnot, please go ahead, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. But for now, I'll catch you all next time. Mm, goodbye.